A Chinese scientist helped not one but two superpowers reach the moon, but his story is remembered in only one of them. In Shanghai, there is an entire museum containing 70,000 artifacts dedicated to one man, the people's scientist Qian Shuesen. Qian is the father of China's missile and space program. His research helped develop the rockets that fired China's first satellite into space and missiles that became part of its nuclear arsenal, and he is revered as a national hero. But in another superpower, where he studied and worked for more than a decade, his significant contributions are rarely remembered at all. Few people know that Qian Shuesen is one of the five founders of NASA. On December 11, 2012, the day of his birthday, the SpaceX sent a Twitter and wished the founder of the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory happy birthday. The history of the development of space projects in the United States originated from the JPL of California Institute of Technology. In 1934, the predecessor of the laboratory, the Guggenheim Aeronautical Laboratory, found the congenital defects of propeller aircraft by studying the problem of high-speed flight and then studied jet advancement. Soon, these studies attracted the addition of several rocket enthusiasts. They set up their own organizations in the college, the Rockets Group, determined to design high-altitude detection of the rockets. And in the list of five people at the beginning of the laboratory, there is a Chinese name we are familiar with, Chen Shuesen. So, what contributions did Qian make to the aerospace industry of the United States and China? Why did he return to China? Why is he not remembered in American history? Okay, as for today's video, we will talk about Qian Shuesen's legendary life. Let's get started. Qian was born in 1911, and it was evident from an early age that Qian was gifted, and he eventually graduated top of his class at Shanghai Jiao Tong University, winning a rare scholarship to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the U.S. In the fall of 1938, Von Karman, a professor of California Institute of Technology, brought back a project from the U.S. Department of Defense, design a boost rocket for heavy bomber so that heavy bombers can take off on aircraft carriers. The head of MIT's aeronautics department rejected the project because it was too difficult. Von Karman took up the subject because when he heard about it, he already had a suitable candidate. That is Qian Shuesen. So, how did Von Karman discover Qian Shuesen's talent? In 1935, Qian came to MIT. He first learned aircraft mechanical engineering. In only one year, he got a master's degree in engineering. But when he graduated, Qian encountered a problem, and he couldn't find an institution that could make him internship. At that time, American aircraft manufacturers only received American students because the manufacturing of aircraft was national secrets. In desperation, Chen had to transfer his professional and chose the theory of aviation. From MIT Chen moved to the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, to study under one of the most influential aeronautical engineers of the day, Theodore von Karman. There Qian shared an office with another prominent scientist, Frank Molina, who was a key member of a small group of innovators known as the Suicide Squad. The group had earned this nickname because of their attempts to build a rocket on campus and because some of their experiments with volatile chemicals went badly wrong, by the way, no one died. One day Qian got drawn into a discussion of a complicated mathematical problem with Molina and other members of the group and before long he was an integral part of it, producing seminal research into rocket propulsion. The predecessor of the JPL is the rocket club of the campus. In 1937, Qian Shuesen, who was only 25 years old, joined the rocket club to become the fifth member, serving as a full-time mathematician and theorist. Several young people of the rocket club began with explosives in the dormitory. With the encouragement of mentor von Karman, they kept pushing their experiments. Due to the poor equipment, various explosions and accidents continued and they were even kicked out of the school because of the explosion accident. But these young people, regardless of the danger, have always devoted themselves to rocket research. From the perspective of people at the time, the rockets were only in science fiction. No one had done it, and no one knew whether it could be done. But that quickly changed with the start of World War II. The Suicide Squad caught the attention of the U.S. military, which paid for research into jet-assisted takeoff, where boosters were attached to the wings of aircraft to enable them to get airborne from short runways. With the funds of the Rocket Club, they moved the laboratory of the school's dormitory to a valley, which was a few miles away from the school. 
At present, this place is the location of the NASA Jet Promotion Laboratory. Military funding also helped establish the JPL in 1943 under the directorship of Theodore von Karman. Chien, along with Frank Molina, was at the heart of the project. In 1958, JPL officially belonged to the NASA, which has now become the main laboratory for the United States. By the end of the war, Chen was one of the world's foremost experts on jet propulsion and was sent with Theodore von Karman on an extraordinary mission to Germany, holding the temporary rank of lieutenant colonel. But by the end of the decade Chen's glittering career in the U.S. came to a sudden halt and his life there began to unravel. As we all come, in China, Chairman Mao declared the creation of the Communist People's Republic in 1949, and quickly the Chinese came to be seen in the U.S. as the evil ones. The charges against Qian were based on a 1938 document of the U.S. Communist Party that showed he had attended a social gathering that the FBI suspected was a meeting of the Pasadena Communist Party. Zhuayue Wang, professor of history at California State Polytechnic University, Pomona, says there is no evidence that Qian ever spied for China or was an intelligence agent when he was in the U.S. He was, however, stripped of his security clearance and put under house arrest. Caltech colleagues, including Theodore von Karman, wrote to the government pleading Qian's innocence, but in vain. In 1955, when Qian had spent five years under house arrest, President Eisenhower took the decision to deport him to China. The scientist left by boat with his wife and two U.S.-born children, telling waiting reporters he would never step foot in America again. He kept his promise. He was one of the most prominent scientists in America. He had contributed so much and could have contributed much more. So it's not just humiliation but also a sense of betrayal. Qian arrived as a hero in China. When he had arrived in China there was little understanding of rocket science, but 15 years later he oversaw the launch of the first Chinese satellite into space. Over the decades, he trained a new generation of scientists, and his work laid the foundations for China's lunar exploration program. Ironically, the missile program that Qian helped develop in China resulted in weapons which were then fired back on America. In fact, Qian's silkworm missiles were fired at Americans in the 1991 Gulf War and in 2016 against the USS Mason by Houthi rebels in Yemen. So there's this odd circularity. The US expelled this expertise, and it has come back to bite them. A former US Secretary of the Navy, Dan Kimball, later head of the rocket propulsion company, Aerojet, once said it was the stupidest thing this country ever did. Qian's life spanned almost a century. In that time China grew from an economic minnow to a superpower on Earth and in space. Xi'an was part of that transformation. But his story could have been a great American one too, where talent, wherever it is found, could thrive. Well, thanks for listening. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.